Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing this morning? Everybody ready to have some awesome carols this morning and just ready to celebrate our Jesus? Amen. Let's stand to our feet. I want you to turn to somebody around you, just wave at them and say, Welcome. Lovely to see you this morning. Amen. Let's praise Jesus together.
Church is here from Galatians chapter 4, where it says, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. And so, Jesus, we thank you. We are not slaves in this place. We're not bound to the curse of the law. We're not bound to the weight of our sin and the penalty that it would bring. Jesus, we've got freedom in you. And so, Holy Spirit, I pray today, have your way in this place. We thank you so much, my God, for how much you love us. I thank you, Lord, for the people that are gathered here. I thank you, God, for the people that are tuning in online right now or listening to this later. We pray, Lord, for your spirit to move in a powerful way in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that as we sing these well-known words that God, that come alive in our hearts as we celebrate who you are, Jesus. The season is all about you. You are glorious. You are majestic. And we thank you for what you do for us in your name. Amen. Amen. Guys, as you have a seat, just give a shout and say, I'm not a slave. I'm free. And welcome to all of you guys. Welcome to everyone that's online joining with us this morning. Uh, this morning is a little bit different because we're doing our carol service, if you hadn't noticed, since our whole service this morning is just chock-a-block full of carols. We encourage you to sing wholeheartedly, to worship Jesus, just to enjoy being together in this place. Um, but we do want to ask you, please be very intentional, just with keeping your mask on, keeping your distance from people that don't live in the same house as you, and making sure that your mask is over your nose and mouth. And just a request as well that at the end of the service, Please make your way outside into the fresh air as quickly as you can so we can sanitize here and we don't linger too long uh, together. I know that's really tough because we're sh social animals and so just encourage you to do that just to keep one another safe um, as we know that the second wave is sort of just ravaging through our country right now. So please do that. If you do start feeling a little bit kind of claustrophobic during the service by having a mask over your, your nose and mouth, then uh, you can just indicate or just move to the back into the foyer. Andrew and some of the guys that are there can help you out. You can go outside for some fresh air. So just some of those house rules that we have uh, as we live in accordance with what the government has set for us. So we bless you guys, and as an eldership, we've been praying for us as a church. We've been seeking the Lord's face. We've been digging into things and just keeping a close eye on what's happening in our country right now. 
And so if you've been watching the news alongside what's been happening with all the COVID stuff, you know, there have been a couple of tragedies in terms of fires that have ravaged our country and all of that. And so we just want to bring a couple of those things before you today. Um, if you are joining with us online, you can get in touch with us on our prayer line. That's 074-400-2049. If you've got any prayer requests and you guys in the room as well, you can send prayer requests or just want eldership to connect with you or just share a testimony, you're welcome to do that. Um, and then like I mentioned in the news, we've seen some fire that's been ravaging Table Mountain and Fishhook sign. And so if you've been following any of the articles, we'll know that Masipu Malele has had more than a thousand homes destroyed. And so what we're encouraging the body to do is to come together and to support, to give financially into that. As an eldership, we've already decided we are releasing funds and then over and above, whatever you give towards that um, is really going to make a massive difference on the ground. And so we've got an info slide that if you guys can just put up for Masi, um, we're giving directly to Living Hope, which for me has been a beautiful testimony of how active the life of the church is and how the church makes a difference in the community. Living Hope is an NPO that was started by King of Kings Church in Fishhook, and the government, the city, through the media, is saying, please support this NGO so that they can do the work in the area, which I just think is phenomenal. And so there's some information there on their website. You can give into that. We would really encourage you to do that. It's going to make a big difference. Trusted organization. We know the people involved. And so just encourage you to give into that. Um, then today, like I mentioned, is our carol service. And then we had mentioned before, we've got some changes coming in terms of no Sunday school at the moment. That's going to be reopening on the 31st of Jan. But we've also been wrestling as an eldership, just keeping an eye on what's been happening, not just in the news, but also kind of anecdotally in our family, the stories that we're hearing about people that are getting sick or have been in contact with people that have got COVID. And so after prayer and wrestling, what we have decided to do is to have today be our last in-person service for a couple of weeks. And so we're going to be shutting down our in-person services for the next few weeks, reopening on the 24th of January with a double service again, 8.30 and 10.30. Church online is going to continue. Um, it's going to be live from here, not pre-recorded, but it will not be open to the public. So if you arrive and you see cars and you think, now's my time, they're not going to let you in unless you're on the worship team. <laughs> so just encourage you, please, during this season, Bear with us. Um, we're trying to do what we think is best and responsible and at the leading of the Lord to protect us as a people and to honor our government as well. And we believe that we can do online well enough that it will tide us over for the few weeks that we can't be face to face. And so again, today is the last in-person service. Already we knew that Christmas was going to be pre-recorded, and so that's 8.30 in the morning on Christmas Day. I encourage you to tune in to that. Bring your family together and all of that. And even while we do church online for the next couple of weeks, I would really encourage you to tune into that at 8.30 with your family, with people together. Because one of the things we're desperately trying to fight for in these seasons where we've got to wear masks and be distanced and all of that is anything that we can have that will help us feel connected and that we are a body, and that we're doing this together is important. And so if you know that you're watching and worshiping and listening to the Word at the same time as the other families in this church, it gives you something precious. And so we just encourage you to do that together. And so I'm going to pray for us this morning as we take up an offering. This is going to be a physical offering that's taken up here. And if you're at home, uh, you can give digitally. Uh, and again, encourage you also check out Living Hope, their website with that info that's there. We'll put it up on Facebook as well so that you can give into that. So let's prepare ourselves to give. And then we're going to give of our finances to the Lord. Yeah, so Jesus, we thank you that in unprecedented times, you are God. You are king, you are sovereign, you are Lord, you are the owner and creator of everything, whether it's our finances, whether it's the breath that we're going to take as our next breath. And so Lord, we want to commit ourselves to you wholeheartedly. I want to pray, Jesus, that as we give, that this worship would just release something fresh in us, that Jesus, we would find joy and peace, that we would find our security in you, even as we give from the money in our bank accounts. So, Lord, we love you. We pray for the well-being of our country. We pray, Lord, for the people in Masi right now that are struggling, that are destitute, really hit by even more harsh poverty than they usually live through. And so, Lord, we pray for your blessing. We pray for your favor. We pray, God, that people would richly support living hope in the work that's having, uh, happening there right now. And so, Lord, for this morning, as we worship, as we hear a short word, as we lift your name up, Jesus, we pray for your presence to be felt in a very special way. And, God, as we come together again, in a few weeks, we will be able to see each other face to face. We thank you, Lord, that all of these things are reminders that this is temporary, you are eternal. And so these light and momentary troubles will gain for us a glory that far outweighs all of the things we're facing now. So we bless you, Lord, and we just give wholeheartedly and with joy. In your name, Jesus.
stand together.
there's nothing more restful than being in the still of night with a peaceful heart. There's something so peaceful and relaxing. And Jesus says to us, when we come to Him, He will give us that rest. When we come to Him, He will give us that peace. And even as you sing that wonderful song, there's just a, there's just a subtleness of knowing the peace of Jesus in our presence. And I just sense right now, there's just, for some folk in this room and those watching, there's, Jesus is just settling in your heart. Come to me, He says. And I will give you rest. And you would experience the blessing and the, the joy of just being silent. As Jesus silences all the things that confuse us and compound our lives. Lord, as we hear your word now, well-known portion of scripture, Holy Spirit, come, just settle in our hearts. We are in a good place where we are in the presence of Jesus. We thank you that he's, our presence with him is not confined to this space. But when we invite you into our lives, Jesus, you are there permanently. Always there to lead us and to guide us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Please be seated. No, we're not finished singing yet, but worship team, you guys, yeah, awesome. Thank you for leading us. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to, to 20. And there were angels living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring the, you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, oh, I'd love to just let my mind grasp the depth of Scripture. And suddenly... The angel had just spoken. Suddenly, God confirms his word. A great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them, they had gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, well, let's see how we feel in the morning. Um, let's just get onto News 24 and see if this really happened. No, they had word heard from the Lord, and, and, they, and it says, and they, le they said, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. We cannot leave this place today, being in the presence of God, without glorifying His name. Thank you, Jesus. Give him a praise offering. This is not a religious gathering. This is not a Christmas carol service that happens once a year. This is a meeting with Jesus. And we are here to drink from the fountain of peace and the fountain of hope and the fountain of joy. But then, as we look at verse 10 to 12 very briefly this morning, we see that this announcement of the angel was at the heart 
of the dawn of a new beginning, the dawn of eternal life, where Jesus came to be the redeemer, the giver of new life, the giver of eternal life. Where Jesus came in John chapter 17, verse 2, it says, and this is eternal life that we may know God. And we know in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, 18, 19, it says, and God reconciled us to himself that we may know him. You see, Jesus came, peace is found in God, not in religion. It's found in Jesus, not in religion. And, and when we come to Jesus, we find peace. You see, God's whole redemptive plan right from Genesis through to Revelation, his whole redemption plan pivoted on the birth of Jesus, the Son of God. And we've been so privileged as a church, and if you're listening online and you haven't listened to the last four weeks' messages, go online and listen. We are so privileged. We, we had such clear teaching on the awesomeness of our Jesus, on the greatness of our Jesus, on the divinity of our Jesus as the Lord and Savior, the King of Kings. He's not just a prophet. He's not just a good teacher. He is the Son of God. He is the way unto salvation. He is the awesome God. Let's give him a praise offering. He's a mighty God, worthy of our praise and worthy of our worship. He's not just a baby in a manger. He's the Son of God. Come purposefully that we might be reconciled to the Father. And every moment in history known to mankind hinges on this pivotal moment. That's why we know all of history before the birth of Christ, this moment is known as B.C. And every, every moment of history after that time is known as A.D., which in, if you take the, 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 the Latin word, actually means in the year of the Lord. So everything after the birth of Christ is known as A.D., 2020 A.D., 2020 years in the, after the coming of Jesus where we're living in the presence of God for those who call on his name. And this, this good news announcement was made to humble shepherds in the shadow of darkness. But I want to say to you that the birth of Jesus Christ is not a private matter. That's why it's impossible for somebody to get saved and keep it to themselves. There's something wrong with that picture. What did these disciples, these uh, shepherds do? The moment they saw and heard, they went and told everybody. See, the birth of Jesus Christ, we read, says, the, shepherd, the angel said, <clears throat> sorry, I bring you good news. That will cause, that will result in great joy. There should be so much joy in this place today because we are children of God. There should be such joy in this place because of the announcement of the shepherds, of the angel to the shepherds. It'll cause great joy for, now get this, all people. And as I was pondering on this this, this week, I thought to myself, <clears throat> is it not true? <clears throat> Sorry. This announcement could be made to the, the high priest. This announcement could be made to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the rulers of the day. But, but, but. God chose to make this announcement to the humble shepherds. And by doing that, he made it, made it all inclusive. Reaching from the lowly to the upper crust. If the upper crust, the, the, the high priest said, this is the message we got from the angel. Do you think the shepherds would have felt they are part of that? But because he went to the shepherds, everybody else knew. If they were part of it, everybody else. So, so God said, I'm going to break on, on, on the ground because I want everybody to know I have come for all people. See, Christianity is for all people for all times. Because this is a savior born, born for the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. If you read Philippians chapter 2, you'll, and I can't expound that now, but Jesus knew that was his mission. He came, he took on flesh so that he would pay the price. He knew that what he was going to do. He came to be the redeemer. 
We see that all of Scripture, and, and Paul teaches so clearly, the Apostle Paul teaches so clearly, that, that Jesus, the reason for him coming was to set the captive free. Romans chapter 3 tells us, For we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and are justified freely by grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. And Acts chapter 2 verse 21 says, And everyone who calls on his name, all people, Whoever today here or is watching online, if you call in the name of Jesus and acknowledge that you are sinful and ask his forgiveness and receive him as Lord and Savior, you will receive forgiveness and you will be called a child of God. Amen. Secondly, not only is it for all people, but it's for today. It says, today in the town of David. Go there, you will find it today. Bethlehem was predetermined. It was a definite place. It was prophesied in Micah chapter 5 verse 2 that the Messiah was going to be born in Bethlehem. It's named there. It's not by chance. It's definite. And I want to say to you, we read in John chapter 7 verse 42, for the scriptures clearly state that the Messiah will be born in the royal line of David in Bethlehem, the village where King David was born. It was the place. Today, in Edgemead, today, wherever you find yourself, Jesus is reaching out to you. And he says, come to me, all you who, who need forgiveness. You don't have to go to a certain place. You don't have to go to a certain town or, or, or church building. Today, today is the day where Jesus is saying, receive my message of love. Receive my message of grace. And he goes on and he says, a Savior is born to you. Oh, I love that. Because I take it personal. I know, I know in, in America they got use all and, and you, but for us it's just you. Jesus came, left the glories of heaven, took on flesh to pay the penalty for my sin, my sin, for me. And for you. But we have to personalize this. Because that gives me joy. When I know that it happened, it's not something that's going to be, it's corporate, but it's, it's only corporate because it's individual. I have joy in my heart because I know I'm saved. I know that he's cleansed me of all unrighteousness. I know that God made him who had no sin, Jesus, to become sin so that I, me, Gavin, Leon van Yerden can be a child of God and walk in the righteousness of Jesus. I, that fills me with joy. I don't need you to have joy in my life. I don't need the church to have joy in my life. Oh, I need you. I'm not, no, no, I, you, you know, more than anything else, I love the gathering of the saints. But in the quietness of my heart, in the troubles of life, in the situations of life, I have joy in my heart because he, he's my Lord. Joseph, Mary's husband, was said, was told, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. I'm sure all of, all of you who are children of God today will realize and recognize this and acknowledge this, that Jesus, God, Jesus is always the initiator in the redemptive drama of our lives. I was a young boy when God broke into my life. I didn't understand it. I didn't even understand everything that happened at that moment. But today, some years later, a couple of years later, I realize God did something eternal. The dawn of eternal life happened to me at the age of eight or nine years old at a holiday club in a little wooden iron house in Abbott's place called Abbotsford in East London. Did I have any understanding of the, com the completeness of what the work that Jesus did? No, but some 50-odd some, some years later, here I stand, knowing that I had this pivotal moment in my life, once before Christ, now with Christ. And today I want to say to you, I don't know where you find yourself today, maybe those watching online or those sitting here, maybe you're feeling so troubled, but God is the one who, 
who interjects into our lives grace and love. Sometimes in the most unexpected times. But he loves you. For it is by grace that you've been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves. It's a gift from God. Not by works so that nobody can boast. A Savior has been born to you. Put your name there. And then lastly, the declaration. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. He's not just a baby. You guys are going to go there and you're going to see the Messiah, Jesus himself. That's why it's called the good news. That's why it's called good tidings. I don't believe any of those shepherds could could have misunderstood the gospel message. I don't believe that any devout Jew, any Jew in that time who studied the scriptures and who had sound teaching in the scripture could could misunderstand what actually happened on that Christmas morning. Because it was prophesied throughout scripture. Only their hardened hearts and unbelief would have stopped them from understanding that. And no one today, I don't believe with all my heart, I don't believe anyone can misunderstand that sinful human beings, and man, we live in a sinful time. It's it's on display. I don't believe that anyone can misunderstand that mankind today needs Jesus, who is the truth, the life, and the way. He who has come to save us and to give us eternal life. I don't believe anybody can misunderstand the need of salvation. The only thing that can help them, cause them to misunderstand it is a hardened heart and, and unbelief. But if they really sat down and weighed up the things of life and the sinfulness of man and the destruction of man and the destruction in every area of life, if they weighed that up, they would realize there is no hope without Jesus. No counseling can help you. No education can help you. No family tree can help you. No DNA can help you. But the DNA of the blood of Jesus who comes to set the captive free. Let's give him a praise offering. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, Yet to all who receive him, my favorite scripture, because that's all I had to do. I couldn't earn it. I couldn't receive it. I I, I couldn't deserve it, but I could only receive it. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of a husband's will, but born of God. Here's the joy of this whole thing. That God didn't just save me and leave me. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. I'm going to draw to a close now. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. And we all who are who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, we are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. This is just a life. It's a life to live. <laughs> Hallelujah. Joy to the world. Good. You can see my son took my voice. When, when <laughs> the Lord has come. Let all. The earth, rejoice. You're sitting in your lounge, you're lying in your bed, whatever, you're listening to this. Just, just contemplate what Jesus has come to offer us. And be filled with joy. Don't believe the lies of the news broadcasts. Or what people are telling us, Jesus has come to bring life and to give us life abundantly. That's the good news made to Everybody. The history as we know it is pivots around the birth of Christ, B.C. and A.D. Your life and my life pivots around you receiving Christ into your life. When you do that, 
your life becomes two departments, the before Christ and then the with Christ, child of God, family of God. You see, in Jesus' economy, it's B.C. and A.D., but Jesus says he ushers in the A.D. with the B.A. Born again. Born again. So in my life, there is no D.C. or what's it? What is <laughs> A.D. <laughs> D.C. B.C. <laughs> I have a before Christ life, and I have a born again life, and it pivoted in that little wooden iron. Church with Tant Sunny, who's gone to be with Jesus a long time ago because she was about my age when I was eight. It was a pivotal time in my life, and my whole life has a before and an after. Maybe yours happened at 55, 65. Maybe today you're sitting in your, in your 70, you're listening for the first time, you think, Well, I've messed my life up so much years. I want to tell you today there can be a pivot in your life, and to, from today you can have a, a be- before Christ's life and then a with Christ's life, if you'll just receive him. Jesus says, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Does your worship team, you can come up. Does the history of your life have a BC and an AD moment, the year of the Lord's favor? If not, then I want to encourage you to call us on, on, the, on, on the prayer line after the service, 074-400-2049. WhatsApp, just a WhatsApp done call. We'll get back to you after the second service. Thank you, Sam. Please don't let this moment go. May this be the best Christmas in your life. If you're sitting in this room, WhatsApp us as well. We'll get connect with you. But if you're online, please just WhatsApp us. The greatest gift you will ever receive is the forgiveness of your sin and Jesus coming to live in your life. Pivotal moment. And if you are a child of God, then all I can ask you is live out all who Christ is in your life. There's some stuff we have to continue just weed out. And today over Christmas, this is a time where people make lots of New Year's resolutions in the year that goes forward, and we'll talk about that in, in early in the next year. But if it's you, if you've been a child of God, and you know that the pivotal moment happened in your life many, many years ago, but things have got pear-shaped, turn to Him again. And say, yes, Lord, I, I understand that you've done a completed work, and I surrender myself to you again. I pray this morning as we bow our heads in the presence of the Lord that Holy Spirit just help us to realize the completeness of salvation. Fill our hearts now with joy. Fill our hearts with with abundance. Fill our hearts with that, that excitement of knowing this is a free gift from God. And it's ours to receive. Please connect with us. We'd love to minister into your life. Let's stand together as we sing.
a shout out this morning. We praise your name, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus, that we just came to celebrate your name this morning. That you are worthy of all praise. That Jesus, that you are glorious. That right now, that you sit in in absolute triumph right now. That Jesus, that all the angels and heavenly hosts are singing, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. We love you so much, Jesus. We pray that this holiday season, Lord God, will be a blessed one for each family, Lord God, represented here today and online, Lord. We pray, Father, that you just be glorified through it all in Jesus' name. Lord God's people said, Amen. Everybody, have a beautiful, beautiful Christmas and have an incredible new year as well. Please make sure that you make your way out if you want to have some conversation this morning and have some conversation in the fresh air outside the doors. You guys have a brilliant, brilliant Christmas. Amen and God bless you. Bye-bye.